Now coming to the Quran, 21 known translations on the market today. I'm sure there are more. There is one translation by a lady from Iran, a scholar, and that translation is worth seeing. Just like Bible, Torah, Quran, Bhagavad Gita, the past generation, the scholars in the Yor have given their interpretations. They're okay for that time. They're not okay. The society did not coexist at that time. Mono societies lived. So these people who are translating Quran, Bible, Quran, Torah, Bhagavad Gita are God's wisdom, they're for eternity, not for today and tomorrow. So we gotta look from that point. So when the Arab kings were invading the Europeans, the Europeans got threatened, frightened about their empire, the kings, I mean. They were frightened that their kingdom, they're going to lose their kingdom. They figured out how to use the suckers, the general public, to go against them. So they paid the monastery of Abbey to deliberately, yes, deliberately mistranslate the Quran and paint these kings, invading them, as any other king at that time, as bad people, as a cult, and the word they coined the new word Mohammedan cult, and they mistranslated the Quran. So when these subjects read it, they get panicked, they get frightened, and they want to defend their kings and go kill them. So the kings used the holy books to mistranslate, to use, protect their kingdoms. It was purely political, and we need to stop buying that kind of translations from 1142. Coming back, fast forward 800 years later, the Ottoman Empire fell in, 19, in the First World War, 1918. Then there were conservative Muslims, or the radical Muslims, like we have radical Christians, or radical Jews. They were concerned that they lost their empire. How do you gain their empire back? Create hatred. They used the exact same tactic as in 1142, but in the opposite direction. There was a guy by name Hilali Khan. That is the bad translation I'm talking about. The Hilali Khan translated the Quran. Thank God, the Quran, every word is preserved. Nothing has been changed, but the translations have been messed up. So Hilali Khan wrote in the Quran, he inserted his own words that are not in Arabic at the Parliament of Religions in Australia and said, last year I made a presentation, since my name is Mike Gauss, many clergy from Iran and Arabia came wanting to know what a Christian is talking about Quran. Anyway, and uh, I presented the PowerPoint. In the PowerPoint, I showed them the words from the Quran, from the Holy Quran, how it was mistranslated. I showed all the first chapter, seven verses. The six verses were beautiful. So is the seventh verse, but the translation ain't. In the translation, it says, Idina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina Anamta Alayhim. It simply means in Arabic, you probably did not hear the word Christian or Jew in that Arabic version. It is not there. Hilali Khan translates that God helped me walk the right path, not the path of those who went astray, or not the path who earned your anger by disobeying the laws of gravity, laws of goodness. What did he do? He writes, God helped me walk the right path, not the path of those who went astray like Christians. Although he says in parentheses, but for you as a Christian, that is the only meaning you get. And who have not angered, earned the anger of Jews by God. That is such a bad translation that is not allowed. And unfortunately, most Muslims who read Quran, recite Quran, read it in Arabic, and move on with prayers. Just like the, La the Christians recite their prayers in Latin, and many Hebrews who don't know Hebrew recite in Hebrew or Sanskrit chanting without knowing the meaning. Some Muslims are as guilty as anyone. My apology, my apology to you and all the Christians and Jews and Hindus around the world for having to read that translation. It is very offensive. 
It is very offensive. It angers. When I read the translate consciously, it angered me. I said, God, how did we Muslims allow this translation to exist for this long? Not only that, in the 11th century, in response, and 10th century, in response to the translation, there were some other Muslims who have written the exegesis out of the cult of Seer. They have interpreted as Christians and Jews. We don't have to accept that crap. God is good. God loves each one of his creation. A God who is not, who is discriminative. A God who favors you behind my back is the God we are wrongly described. God doesn't do that. God's moon and God's sun shines on the dirtiest pearl as was the crystal clear mountain. How can we reduce God to a bad guy? How can we reduce God to a villain? Muslim God, Christian God, Hindu God. No. Even if there were several gods, they would have fought each other and ultimately one would have prevailed. I'm sorry, that is humorous. We have a responsibility to create a better world. I am going to bring the right translation of Quran to you, sir. Take a look at it. Find the faults in it. And if they are agreeable faults, I'm going to come and work for your missionary. It's a challenge to you. If not, I'm not asking you to become a Muslim. I don't believe in it. To me, I could have been equally a Christian, a Jew or a Hindu. By default, I was born in a Muslim family. I chose to become an atheist for nearly 30 years. When friends like you did not attack, understand Quran and started attacking the Quran, I have a habit of opening the world scriptures, the Jain, the Quran, the Baha'i strikes, Bible, Torah, and randomly open a page and see the beauty in it. I opened Bhagavad Gita. It transformed me completely. There was one verse that said, finding the truth is your own responsibility. It's very thoughtful. Your pastor, your imam, your teacher, your rabbi is not responsible for the anguish you go through in your solitude in your privacy. Or since you're a Christian, you believe in a day of reckoning, that day is going to be counted. Nobody's going to go scot-free. We have to answer and be responsible for what we do. So that single verse led me, when everybody started attacking the Quran in the late 90s, I said, I need to believe this holy book, the Bhagavad Gita. I wanted to understand the truth. All the translations that I had read like you did turned me off. I did not want to have anything to do with Quran some 15 years ago because God, how can God hate other people? I had nothing to do with Islam and Quran. But this book, Bhagavad Gita, turned me around. Finding the truth is my own responsibility and I did. Each verse in the Quran, I saw the wrong translations like everybody on the earth has done. Then, I had a chance to read some other translations. And all of a sudden started seeing the difference. Then I read more translations. There are more goodness out there than some two bad translations. And that gave me a confidence enough to resume back to my original faith, Islam. I could have been easily a Christian, a Baptist, because I believe every faith is beautiful. In your sermon you said, you kind of said, that the other evangelicals, 53% of them, believe that there are multiple paths and you decried that. There are multiple paths. God has not given you, has not signed a deal with you behind my back. It is your belief what Jesus said. It is my belief what Bhagavad Gita and Quran says. It is belief versus belief. There are no facts to prove anything. So, what is important? You and I exist on this earth in the United States. We have to figure out how can we live in peace. I want you to think before you say any word. Are my words mitigating conflicts? Are my words nurturing goodwill? If not, am I a religious person? Am I creating the kingdom of heaven that Jesus promised where nobody lives in fear? We have to think. Think about it. Thank you.